Hey, what's up guys? It's Chris here from Exxon Online and today I want to show you a very, very cool trick. And this one is called the Kick Sub Bass Generator Trick. And I'm going to do it in Cubase 9.5. Now, if you're not using Cubase, no worries, because this one can be done in most DAWs. All right, so before we jump in, if you're new here on this channel, please subscribe and click that notification bell so you get notified every time I upload a new video. And don't forget to share and to like this video. That helps the channel a lot. Now, my goal here is to add a bit more thickness to the kick drum. I usually use a sample. I have a sub kick sample that I like to use and that I use on a lot of my productions. Um, but sometimes it happens that I use the following technique. Um, now, what I'm going to do here is to add a sine wave. Okay, I'm going to select the frequency out of a sine wave and add this to my kick drum. So every time the kick is going to play, it is going to trigger the sine wave, okay, which will be uh, playing at the same time as the kick. Okay, I'm going to show you how I do this in Cubase, but again, Follow me if you're using another um, DAW, it's going to work the same way, okay? Um, so first, what I'm going to do is to add a audio mono track. I'm going to call this one sub bass. Okay, I'm going to route the output in the same group as all the other um, drum tracks. And there you go. I'm just going to put that one in red so it's going to be easier for you to locate the track. And then I'm going to insert the Cubase test generator. You can find this one in tools and test generator. Okay, I'm just going to bring this one down for now. And uh, just to start with, I'm going to add 50 hertz. Okay, and this is what we're going to get. Okay, I'm going to keep that down for now. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and look for my Cubase gate. All right. I'm just going to bring that up. Okay, now I have my gate closed and I'm going to activate the sidechain option right on top here. All right, so now that the, the sidechain is activated, I'm going to go on my kick channel to the sends section right here. And I'm gonna look for the sidechain option. Now that I activated the sidechain uh, on the gate, it is gonna be shown right down below in the sends section, okay? Uh, so I'm gonna select it. I'm gonna activate it and then I'm gonna make sure it is in pre-fader mode, okay? Because I wanna keep the signal independent from the kick fader, okay? Uh, so this is why I use it as a pre-fader send. I'm going to go back on my sub kick channel and look at my gate and let's just have a quick listen here. It's going to bring my threshold down. Now what's happening is very simple. Okay, since I have the side chain activated on my gate and that I'm sending the kick drum signal into that sidechain gate. Uh, what's happening is every time that the kick plays, okay, that I have a kick drum hit, it opens up the gate and it lets the uh, sine wave go through, okay? So that's basically it. So now I have the control now with my gate settings, I'm gonna have to control how much time I want the gate to be open, okay? So I'm just gonna tone shape my, uh, my sine wave, my 50 hertz, sine wave uh, to go with my kick, okay? So let me show you what I do here. Uh, first, I usually add a bit more attack uh, to my uh, signal, maybe like a three or two uh, milliseconds of attack time. Um, then what I'm doing here is I'm just gonna add a bit more hold, okay? Um, not that much, but maybe like a three or a four millisecond hold and then the release time. Now that will depend on what I want to achieve here. So let's play with the release time a bit and see what we can, um, we can end up with. Okay, if I bring it lower, it's 
going to be a bit more tight, I would say, okay, a bit more dry. So if you're looking for something that is a bit drier, I would go with a lower release time, okay? Um, I'm just going to do a before and after so you get the idea of what's missing if we mute the, um, the sine wave. Okay, let's listen in context. Now, so it's easy to tell the difference. Now, the volume is a bit, um, is a bit high on my uh, sub kick. So let's bring that down a bit. Now let's increase the release so we get a bit more of a tail out of this low frequency. All right, now for this type of tempo, I would probably bring my release lower, something around 100. Cool. So that sounds pretty good. So guys, it is very easy to, uh, to, to, to get a sine wave linked to your kick drum um, just to, to increase the thickness of the kick drum. Okay, very easy to do in Cubase and very easy to do in other DAW. Now, um, something you can do that will add a bit more to this technique is to select the frequency, the low frequency, according to the key the song is into. So if my song is in G, I'm going to select 49 Hertz, which is G1, basically, okay? Now I have a free tool for you to download. It's a note to frequency chart. That is going to help you to select the correct frequency according to the key of the song you're mixing, okay? It's very simple to use and just follow the link down below and download that for free. All right, so this is it for today. I hope that helps. If it did, please like and share this video. And again, if you're new here on this channel, feel free to subscribe and to click that notification bell. All right, guys, until next time, see you.